What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video we are going to take this CodeShares FeltKit application that I've created in a previous video, and we are going to turn it into a desktop application. In order to do this, we are going to use a toolkit called Tori, which allows you to build desktop applications from modern front-end frameworks such as FeltKit, Next.js, and more. Tori is built on Rust and allows us to create desktop applications for all major desktop platforms. Tori has a bunch of features that allow you to expand upon your SvelteKit application to make it even better as a standalone application. For example, you have app storage so you can access a user's folder, native notifications, and things like that. We're not going to be getting into every single detail of Tori in this video, but this is a great start for anyone who wants to develop desktop applications with SvelteKit. This tutorial is meant to be very general, so if you have a SvelteKit application right now, you can do the exact same steps I do, and you can just replace it with your own project. But if you want to create the exact project that I'm using for this video, I'm going to have this link in the description where you can copy this and then clone this repo, and you'll have the exact same code as me. Just to show you guys, I have that entire GitHub repo I just showed you, and it's in a folder on my computer, and it's running locally over here. Now we can get started on setting up the prerequisites for Tori. So I will make a very important point here. I'm going to show personally the setup for Windows. If you're using a different operating system, you can go to this prerequisites link right here and go scroll down and find the setup for your certain operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to show you guys Windows. So the first thing we need to install is the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ build tools. So we can go to the link they mentioned here and by the way, I will be linking all these in the description for you guys to download as well. So go down there and you'll find the links. The first one is a C++ build tools, which I'm just going to download here. You should get an exe like this. You can just run it. And just like anything else, you can go through the installation process. There's nothing crazy. If something comes up, I'll tell you guys what to do. And so we want to make sure to check desktop development with C++. And to be safe on the right here, I'm going to download the exact Windows SDK they have here. So this 10.19041, that's the one you want to download as well. So your checked boxes should look something like this. Then we can move forward by pressing install. Admittedly, I'm destroying my watch time by doing this, but this download is going to take a while. So go do something fun and hopefully you come back to the video. It's a good amount of stuff it has to install in order for you to do desktop development. All right, so this one's going to take a while to install, but we can actually continue downloading the other prerequisites. So the next thing we're going to need is something called a web view too. This might already be part of your current version of Windows is what this note here says. But if not, we can go over to Microsoft's website, which I'll link in the description, of course. And to make things simple for you guys, I'm going to download the Evergreen Bootstrapper, which is pretty much going to make sure it gives you the correct type of file to download for WebView 2. So just press download on the bottom left here. Accept whatever Microsoft has to say and say accept and download. So I just went through the process here to show you how to download WebView 2 if you need it. My computer already has it, so it's just saying you're already good to go, and so we can just keep moving forward. If your computer doesn't have it, it should just have a really simple download here, and then you'll be on your way. And then finally, we have to download Rust, because Tori is based on Rust, and so it needs to have Rust to work pretty much, right? So in order to install Rust, we can go over to rustlang.org slash tools slash install right here. I'm on a 64-bit computer, so I'm going to choose download Rust up init.exe to the right here. So we can just run this file right here. We can press 1 to proceed with installation, and then press Enter. All right, so Rust should install everything for you. Then we can press the Enter key at the end here, and the installer is going to go away. I got lucky when recording this video because my build tools are now fully done, which is great news. If you guys run into issues regarding path variables or anything like, you know, it won't recognize all the packages we just downloaded, I will give you a piece of advice. Restart your computer. Sometimes for stuff like this, it just requires a restart, and then everything will be on the right path. All right, at this point, we've installed everything that we need to install in order to work with Tori and create desktop applications. Now we are going to do two different things. We are going to change our SvelteKit application a little bit so it's ready to be a desktop application. And then we are going to make a very small Rust project that helps us run our actual desktop application. And don't worry, this isn't a Rust tutorial. We are just going to kind of get everything configured and set up. And I will talk more about the small Rust project when we get there. For now, let's configure our SvelteKit project. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to make a change to our SvelteKit project 
with something called SSG, which means static site generation. When we work with desktop applications, we don't need all that functionality such as server side rendering or anything like that because this isn't gonna be hosted on a web server. So that is why we have to enable our Svelte kit to be a statically generated site. So in order to get this adapter, we can npm install right here, go over to our project, and then within your actual Svelte kit project, we are going to npm install as a dev dependency, so dash dash save dev, at svelte.js slash adapter dash static at next. And so we can just press enter. All right, so we added that package to our project. Now we can go into our svelte.config.js, and we are going to simply change this adapter that we initially imported to the top here. So instead of adapter dash auto, we are going to do adapter dash static, which is the package we just installed. Make sure to save this file and now we're good to go. Inside of our main layout.ts that covers our entire web page, we are going to set the pre-render to true and server-side rendering to false. So you can take these exports, go over to layout.ts, so it should be under your source and then routes. So my project didn't have a layout.ts, but that's totally cool because we can just go in here and make the plus layout.ts. So if you're in your own project, feel free to do that. And you can just put these exports at the top. Make sure to save that and then we're good to go. It's also important to realize that this is actually a preference. You can look specifically at adapter documentation if you prefer your application to kind of act more like a single page application, as they say, over something that has been pre-rendered with static site generation. All right, guys, so now we are going to create the Rust part of our project. The main reason why Rust gets involved here is it's how our SvelteKit application communicates with Windows. SvelteKit by itself does not understand Windows at all, so Tori helps us translate SvelteKit code and turn it into something that runs as a native desktop application. So the Rust project is going to live side by side inside of our SvelteKit project. So it's actually going to create a folder inside of here to hold all the actual Tori functionality. So inside of your actual SvelteKit project, you can go in here and we're gonna to wanna to make sure to go to package.json. This is because we want the keyword Tori to be recognized by NPM. So in order to do that, we can go into our scripts and tell it that Tori is equal to Tori, but we're not done quite yet. In order to use Tori in our command line, we need to save the Tori CLI. So we can say npm install dash dash save dash dev at Tori dash apps slash CLI. So you should see that it added some packages here, which is great news. Now that the Tori CLI has been installed, we can go in here and say npm run Tori in it. So this is going to initialize Tori in our SvelteKit project. I'm going to name my app code share like this. The window title is going to be code share again. I'm not very creative. <laughs> and instead of dot dot slash public, we want to go to the build folder instead. So dot dot slash build. This is where our SvelteGate project is going to get built to instead of dot dot slash public. So make sure it's build, then we're good to go and press enter. For SvelteGate, we run on localhost 5173. The front end dev command we say is npm run dev, which you guys have seen before, I'm sure. And for building, we say npm run build. So you can press enter. Now everything has been created and you'll see source dash Tori is going to be inside of here. And so you guys can see we have a folder here that has a bunch of different things related to Tori and Rust and interfacing directly with Windows or whatever platform you're on. So the initialization makes it really easy for us to use Tori. Now that everything's been installed and guys, I know this has been a while here. You want to npm run Tori dev. Now if we press enter. It's going to take a second, especially if you're downloading a lot of the Rust things for the first time. So feel free to give this one some time. If it goes on forever, it's okay. And at the very end, you'll see it's compiling the actual application it's building for us. So in a second here, we should have access to a real Windows application we can use. So guys, check out how cool this is. We have a code share Tori application that is 100% built and has all the same functionality. So I can still delete stuff. I can still enter in a snippet title, for example, I'm going to name this one what you should do. It's going to be some HTML and I'm going to make an H1 saying subscribe to Cooper Codes. I know I'm the most shameless tech YouTuber. And then we can create this snippet right here and you'll see everything is working in its own desktop environment. All right, guys, so this is really cool, but this is actually how you would develop a Tori application. If we wanted to build an executable or a file for us to actually run, what we need to do is do the Tori build command. So we can go over to our command line, we can terminate this, and then we can npm run Tori build. 
So one thing that's really important is you need to have a unique identifier for your project. So I'm going to do something like cooper.codes.code.share.video. Hopefully no one else has that. And then we can save our identifier here and then run the Tori build again. I'm realizing I didn't tell you guys which file to go to. So tori.conf.json under your source dash Tori. And guys, if this takes a while, don't worry. That's completely normal for a lot of this stuff, especially as you do it on the first time. All right, so our build finally finished up. You'll see inside of the source Tori folder, there is a hidden folder called target. So make sure you have like hidden folders, you know, enabled or whatever that thing is. But you should see this folder called target and inside of release, which is what we just built, there's going to be a codeshare.exe. So I'm actually going to open this in my file explorer to give you guys a better look. So go into release, then go into this. And you'll see we have a mysterious codeshare.exe. So if this gives me a virus, um, it was it was nice knowing you guys, and hopefully I'll be back on YouTube eventually. But <laughs> so so I will run the codeshare.exe here and check it out. Now we are really not playing around. We don't have any development server running anything like that. Nope. And we can still go in here and make amazing things such as subscribe or else. So I'm getting more serious this time. You better subscribe i i got some exclamation points i know guys i'm a little i'm a little feisty and so now we can go down here see our snippets delete things like normal create snippets and there we go i honestly found tori to be super cool although when i was building stuff myself i ran into some issues even with the documentation when it came to actually building it directly with svelkit and so hopefully this video helps someone when it comes to that whole process I know YouTubers will say this all the time to the point where it almost loses its value, but please let me know in the comments if you find Tori interesting. I'm considering doing more videos on Tori, but it's kind of a niche topic, so please, if you're interested, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm really just scratching the surface here, and I hope you guys have a great time building applications with Tori, and hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks so much for watching.